what you see here is a, a good example of something where Newton's third law can be applied. You guys have learned Newton's third law as for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, what we're going to try to do is just try to understand that idea a little bit more. Okay, if we take a look here at our professor sitting on a skateboard with a fire extinguisher, right? He is shooting the fire extinguisher back, which is shooting the air out. So there is a force propelling the air backwards. And for every action, there must be an equal and opposite reaction. So because he is pushing the air out backwards, the air is pushing on him and he is going to go forwards or in his sense, backwards. But you have one force pushing something to the right. You have another force pushing something to the left. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Let's learn a little bit more about this. All right. Uh, this is very similar to many different actions that we've seen. Uh, some two examples of this are if you have a a balloon that is filled with air and you have it taped to a straw and then you have that straw running on a string. It's a, basically a balloon roller coaster, right? Where what we see is we see, we see that the uh, balloon is going to push the air out backwards. That would be the action. The blue pushes on the air. And the reaction then is going to be the air pushes on the balloon. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the action, the balloon pushes the air. The reaction, the air pushes the balloon. Same thing if you're riding a skateboard or even if you're just walking, right? If you're on a skateboard, what you do is you push backwards, right? And from you pushing backwards on the ground, you are moving yourself forward. Or if you're jumping off of a skateboard, think about if you're standing on a skateboard and trying to jump off of it, right? You would be jumping and the skateboard would push you forward, you would push the skateboard backwards. So Newton's third law is for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Basically what this means is anytime there is a force, there is always a second force. So forces always come in pairs and we're gonna call these pairs action and reaction pairs. What we're going to do then is try to understand these action-reaction pairs a little bit better and understand some of the details that go along with action and reaction pairs. So action-reaction pairs, the big thing that people don't get correct is that they think that those action-reaction pairs can be acting on the same thing, where they actually have to be acting on different objects. Okay, So I've tried to be very distinct in how I've uh, explained action forces and reaction forces and how I'm saying it. So listen again. For this situation where you're walking, the shoe pushes on the ground backwards. The ground pushes on the shoe forwards. So my action push from the sole of the shoe on the grass. The reaction push from the grass on the shoe. So what you'll notice is that those two forces, the two pushes, one going backwards, one going forwards, they're actually acting on different objects. One's on the grass, the other one is on the shoe. All right, so the big thing is when action-reaction pairs, when they act on different objects, another example of this. If you're swimming, you're doing the backstroke, or even just a normal swim, right, and you're starting a race, what is this swimmer going to do? She's going to let go with her hands and push on the wall as hard as she can with her feet. Here's the action, the force of the swimmer pushing on the wall to the left. The reaction is the force of the wall pushing on the swimmer to the right. So those are the two forces. Notice they are on different objects. So think about this scenario here where we have a book just sitting on a table, right? A very simple scenario. And, but let's look at all the action-reaction pairs that could be actually happening with this. So this might seem overwhelming, right? But what I did is I labeled every action-reaction pairs. And there's actually a few more that I just didn't label. But the simple ones are the same color, right? So the action, gravity, the earth pulls down on the book, right? Notice I put this big dot here. That is on the book. The reaction is not this orange force because that orange force is also on the book. And action-reaction pairs must be on different objects. So the reaction is the book pulls up on the earth. So the earth pulls down on the book. Basically what we do to find the reaction is we flip the nouns and change the direction. So earth is first, book is last, and it's down. 
The reaction, the book is first, the earth is last, and it's up. So the book pulls up on the earth. Action. The book pushes down on the table. So here's the book pushing down on the table, right? That's this force right here. The reaction is the table then pushes up on the book. Now, this orange force here and this blue force are equal. They are equal in size. They are opposite in direction. We know that because the book's at rest. So the net force is zero. That's Newton's first law. Check that out if you need to, right? But they're not action-reaction pairs. They are not equal and opposite because of Newton's third law, because they are both acting on the same object. Another force pair here, the action, the earth pulls down on the earth, or on the table, excuse me. The earth pulls down on the table. The reaction would be the table pulling up on the earth. Okay. So here's what we know. Other action reactions, right? A bullet is fired out of a gun. That's the action. So the gun pushes the bullet forward. The reaction is the bullet pushes the gun backwards. That's why you have that kickback on a gun. Someone's pushing against a car on rollerblades, right? Uh, what happens here, right? The person pushes on the car. The car pushes on the person. Those are my reaction, action reaction pairs. The forces in each of these scenarios are equal, right? The gun on the bullet and the bullet on the gun are the same size of force. For every action, there is an equal reaction. The force of the person pushing on the car is the same as the force of the car pushing on the person. Those forces are equal. The difference is that their accelerations are different, right? And they are different because they have different masses. This is Newton's second law. So Newton's first law is based, or excuse me, Newton's third law is basically just Newton's first and second law applied for the pairs, right? So in this scenario, why does the bullet travel faster than the gun? Well, because the bullet's substantially smaller. It has an equal force, but a lighter mass. So it's going to have a bigger acceleration. It's going to travel at a greater velocity once the force is done pushing on it. Same thing here. The car is not going to move as fast as the person. Why does the person move faster? Well, because it's not that their force on them is bigger. It's that their mass is lighter. The forces are equal, but the masses are different, and that's why their motions are different. Okay? A lighter mass means a greater acceleration. A heavier mass means a smaller acceleration. So if we think about this, here's an action. The earth pulling down on the ball. The reaction, the ball pulls up on the earth. But here's the thing. The earth barely accelerates. It doesn't really at all, because this is such a small force compared to the size of the mass of the earth. However, the size of the force compared to the mass of the ball is great. It's very big. And so that's why the ball falls down. That's why it accelerates downwards. Okay. So big thing with Newton's third law, forces are equal. They come in pairs, but those pairs must act on different objects. But the resulting motion is different. Right? Not everything that has an action-reaction pair reacts the exact same way, and it's because of the object's masses that they are acting on. Right? If you jump off a skateboard, if we go back to one of our first examples, right? if we jump off this skateboard, the skateboard's going to go flying here very quickly, where the person's not going to go as fast. Why? Because the forces are equal, but the mass of the skateboard is much smaller than the person, so that skateboard travels faster, the person travels slower. Right? So hope that gives you a little bit better idea of what Newton's third law is. Yes, we've heard it before. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. But it's so much more than that. And hopefully we can build our understanding of that.